Across the U.S., there are dozens of dilapidated, vacant towns that are still standing despite their residents fleeing decades and sometimes centuries ago. Many are towns and camps which once bustled because of the gold rush, mining boom, or because of new highways being built near them. But for one reason or another, they now stand alone giving passersby a snapshot of a bygone era. Here are the creepiest ghost towns scattered across the U.S. Please subscribe and ring the bell button to be always notified whenever we upload more interesting videos. South Pass City, Wyoming South Pass City is one of Wyoming's largest historic sites, and the abandoned site is open to visitors every year from mid-May to mid-October. The area used to be home to over 30 gold mines on the Oregon Trial, but soon after they closed, it became a ghost town. It has been listed on the National Register of Historic Places, and the town also played an important role in women's history. South Pass City was where a bill was passed to make Wyoming the first territory where women could vote and hold public office after a law was signed in 1869. This freedom was not granted to women nationally until 1920. By the mid-1870s South Pass City's population was reduced to about 100 people. In the years following, many of the city's homes and businesses began to fall into disrepair. Bodie, California Bodie, located near the Nevada state line in the Sierra Nevada mountain range and 75 miles southeast of Lake Tahoe, has been described as a real ghost town with buildings still falling down today. The ghost town is on a 8,500-foot elevation and again was one of the boom town during the gold rush. At its height in 1879, there were about 10,000 residents living in the gold mine town, but by 1915 it was officially described as a ghost town. Bodie was made a California historic landmark, meaning the town will be preserved in the years to come and it receives about 200,000 visitors yearly. Among the buildings lost in time in the Wild West ghost town is a wooden church and gas pumps with the remains of old trucks still nearby. Texola, Oklahoma. Texola is located along America's most famous route, Route 66. The ghost town has actually gone through name changes across the years reflecting the change in state lines. It used to be called Texacla and Texoma, after both Texas and Oklahoma. Texola grew rapidly in the 1920s and its population peaked at 581 in the 1930 census, and the area had a booming local economy following the creation of Route 66. But in the decades following, the number of people living in the area slowly declined because of the lack of cotton production what the town was known for in its earlier years. One of the only things that visitors can see when they come to Texola is a quirky roadside one-room jail. Built in the late 19th century, it's a single-cell entity with an iron-barred door and window. Centralia, Pennsylvania Once a booming mining town, the area went into steep decline. At its peak, the town had seven churches, 27 saloons, two theaters, and a bank. There were also five hotels, a post office, 14 general and grocery stores in Centralia, but as many of the miners enlisted in the military during World War I, the population started to decline. The Wall Street crash of 1929 also caused havoc for the town. The Lehigh Valley Coal Company closed five of its Centralia local mines, causing further hardship for the local economy. Mines then started to collapse as people tried to pillage off them. This complicated the prevention of the mine fire in 1962. The fire still burns across 400 acres spreading along four fronts, 
300 foot underground. There is still steam and smoke coming from abandoned portions of the area, and unstable ground and dangerous levels of carbon monoxide all also point towards the underground fire still burning. Experts believe it could still be burning for the next 250 years. North Brother Island, New York North Brother Island is a 20-acre island in the Bronx, found near Rikers Island and the Bronx. Up until 1964, it housed Riverside Hospital and its patients, who has quarantinable, contagious diseases. The hospital used to be on Roosevelt Island but moved in the 1880s. People who were in hospitals on the island were treated for smallpox, tuberculosis, polio, and typhoid. In 2007, the island was given to the city, who turned it into a sanctuary for water birds. It is closed to the general public, and most of the original 25 buildings still stand, but are dilapidated. Ruby Arizona. Ruby is 50 miles southwest of Tucson and was once the largest mining camp in southwest Arizona. But it is now officially a ghost town, despite its thriving business in the 1930s and housing a population of 1,200. Its activity as a mining hub was massively helped by the Montana Mine and the Eagle Pitcher Mining Company. However, when that ended in 1941, the town also went into decline. Between 1920 and 1922, the town also saw three double homicides named the Ruby Murders. The crimes led to the largest manhunt in the history of the Southwest. Cahaba, Alabama Cahaba was once Alabama's first permanent state capital in the 1820s and served as a major cotton distribution area. Residents often endured floods and soon the area became near uninhabitable. It stopped appearing on census rolls after 1880. The area is now run by Alabama Historical Commission who maintains the site as Old Cahaba Archaeological Park. Spokane, South Dakota. Located about 10 miles southeast of Mount Rushmore National Memorial in South Dakota's Black Hills, Spokane used to be a mining camp. The area is now riddled with ghost town buildings, which used to surround lucrative gold, silver, and copper mines. Once the mine stated to fail, it was closed in 1940 and the town was largely abandoned within the next decade. A watchman remained in the town until the mid-1980s, but then it was officially abandoned. Blue Heron, Kentucky this area along the Big South Fork River near the Kentucky-Tennessee border once used to have a busting mine, which was in operation from 1937 to 1962. The town was then abandoned after the coal mines closed and its buildings were either removed or decayed. But in the 1980s, there was an attempt to recreate the town, which has now been opened as a ghost structures. People can visit Blue Heron and experience what it was like in the isolated mining community. Frisco, Utah At its peak in 1885, Frisco was a thriving town of 6,000 people thanks to its active mining caps between 1879 and 1929. By 1885, Frisco had mined over $60 million worth of zinc, copper, lead, silver, and gold. The town had a total of 23 saloons, and was known for being the wildest town in the Great Basin ravaged by murders occurring nearly every day. 
However, the bustling town's lucrative industry came crashing down on February 13, 1885. The Horn Silver Mine completely caved in, causing a slow decline in economy. Good Springs, Nevada Good Springs is situated around 45 minutes from the Las Vegas Strip and is frozen in time. Visitors can see the Pioneer Saloon, which used to service one of the most bountiful mining districts in southern Nevada. By World War I, Good Springs had a population of about 800 people, but this dwindled significantly after World War II as mining families slowly moved away. Today, there is a population of around 200. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to subscribe.